the internet further changed things because now, whether you're a writer, you have a video camera, whatever you're doing, you now have an audience. Of course, there are some drawbacks to the internet, one of which, there are so many different ways you could deliver content. And I know a lot of new people are here, and you sit there and you think, okay, we've got all these different social networking things that are out there. We have podcasts. We have RSS feeds, if you're not familiar with what that is. It just stands for really simple syndication, and it allows people to, with a click of a button, subscribe to your content so it either comes in their email, into uh, iTunes or something so that they can get your podcast every time it comes up. It could be difficult to manage, and that's where WordPress comes in. I'm not a highly technical person. I'm, Tony mentioned how many people are totally new to WordPress. I'm not much above you, but since I've been using WordPress, anything I throw at it, I've been able to do. If I want to do a video, if I want to tell a story, I can do it, and WordPress handles it. And I'll show you in the next section a little bit how it handles that. There's another issue with the internet, however. It seems like a lot of times you come up with an idea and you think, it's me against them. And it's not just this many thems. When you sit there and you come up with an idea and you go out online and you start researching it, you realize there's a billion and 17 thems doing the same exact thing I'm doing. And it can be daunting because your goal is to stand out. You want to stand out over them. And there are obviously so many different ways you could do this, but one of the ways that I've found that helps me, and I hope helps you, is by creating sequential content. So maybe you're wondering, what, am I, what do I mean with sequential content? I can go ahead and I can give you the, de the definition from the dictionary, but I'm not a big fan of, I think it's evident by now, of putting a bunch of text on a screen and sequential content is of, relating to, or arranged in a sequence. That doesn't really sum up what I'm talking about. Because I'm talking about ordered content. Very simple concept. And with a little bit more. And that little bit more is what I'm going to talk about at the very end. I'm going to make you guys wait for that. <laughs> because it's even more important than sequential content. And if you think about what I just did, I just gave you a sequence. Now in your head, if you're thinking, man, this stinks so far, now I've promised you something that hopefully by the end you're going to wait for. Even if you want to leave, you're not going to leave because you want to see what this one big thing is. I mentioned WordPress is a great way to deliver your content. And it really is, for me, it makes everything I'm doing easy. And like I said, I'm not very technical. WordPress gets all your ducks in a row so that you as content creators can share where the ducks are going. Because if you think about that, that's what really matters to the person on the other end of the screen. When Mark creates a podcast, I really don't care what he has back behind everything he's doing. I just care about what he's doing and if it's interesting to me. I care about the story of this image. To me, this is girls night out, clearly. And I want to know more about this photo. And if I were creating content and I left you with, hey, next week, see what these ducks are doing, you're more likely to come back. It's our job as creators of content to make the people reading, viewing, whatever, care about these ducks. So how do you do that? And that's where sequential content comes in. Obviously, there are so many different types of sequential content. I'm going to talk about five that I came up with, thinking about how it applies to me, and I hope it helps you. The first kind, I'm going to talk about stories. I'm going to talk about series. I'm going to talk about characters, frequency, and just good old-fashioned good writing. Most of us are familiar with stories. We hear them, when, it's one of the first things we hear. They're read to us before we go to sleep as infants. And maybe you're sitting here looking at this thinking, that's great, but I'm an interior designer. I don't have a story like you do of this family traveling across, across country. I don't have something podcast-worthy like that. But everybody has a story. 
And I think it's important to look at different types of the different mediums and think about how it applies to you, even if you don't, especially if you don't think it applies to you. Comic books. It's one of my favorite, it's not one of my favorite mediums. Comic books are my favorite medium. I mean, I'll just come right out. I met my wife when I was writing comic books for a small company, so comic books and juggling have been very good to me. She also juggles. But Do you juggle comic books? We, yes, we could juggle comic books too. <laughs> If you think about this medium, it's lasted so long because every month there's a story. Here we have Daredevil. What's going to happen to him? He's, he's jumping off a building upside down. He's going to be doing some crazy stuff. You want to see what's going to happen next month. But it's even more than that. There are those little things that people on the other end don't realize how much goes into creating a comic book. When you're reading a comic book, if I'm a comic book, I'm, you know, I'm the pages of the book, what happens on this page and this page dictates what happens on that page turn. And you don't really think about that because it's so automatic. But the writer thinks that. Think about the content you're creating. Think about the way it's laid out. Yeah, you're not writing comic books. But how can you guide somebody through whatever you're wanting them to be interested in and then give them that moment, maybe not a physical page turn, but they click on something and something wonderful happens. I don't care what you're doing. If you have a tech blog, you're a designer, you're an artist, we all have the ability to figure out what's on the other side, what's on that other side of a page turn. Novels, obviously, are one of the most enduring types of sequential content. They've been around for a very, very long time. And people were, at first, content with just, here's a novel with a single story in it. But just like Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th, Part 10, people wanted more. I'm sure, I think it's a safe bet, that more than seven people in this room have read all seven of these books. How many people have read Harry Potter books? Right there. That's the power of sequential content. There was a time when it would have just been one book that chronicled everything. But we're now moved on to a point where people like smaller bits of content. And I know it's funny when you're sitting there looking at some of those later novels that thinking that it's a smaller bit of content, but if J.K. Rowling had wrote, written the whole thing, you know, I could sit and do my presentation on a pile of her books. Again, you may not think that you're doing this, but you're, let's think about how you approach your content. She could have written one giant book, but she chose to break it up, and by breaking it up, she was able to make it last much longer. Exactly. Make more money, if that's your thing. And we all have the ability to take what we're doing and look at it and break it into pieces and spread it out over a longer period of time. I talked about television. Soap operas are interesting. I don't really watch them, although I think it was Days of Our Lives. I did watch once because there was, was flipping channels and there was a possessed woman. And it, it hooked me for about a month or two. <laughs> I mean, I was really hooked, and I never thought I'd be hooked. But if you think about one of the interesting things about soap operas, I know grandparents whose children and their children watch the same soap opera. Now, the internet isn't quite as, it's more immediate. Maybe it's not going to have the lasting time that soap operas have had. But think about the content you create. Let's just pretend that all the technology that's in place is going to be there for 40 years. Are you creating content that people are going to want to share with their children? 